Tonight on Special Assignment, we hear about drones mostly used as weapons of war or spying on our enemies, but another use for the devices is taking flight for research and science. An inventor in Old Lyme has been building his own brand of the remote control technology to help study wildlife in remote places. Just don't call them drones. Here's Fox Connecticut's Jim Altman. When you think of a drone, this probably comes to mind. Or this. Or this. But far from any battlefield. This is an electronics bench, so that's a machine shop. In a basement in Old Lyme, drones as we know them are in search of a new image. So this is the drone shop, Don? No, this is the UAS shop, Unmanned Aerial Systems. Don Leroy is getting major props for his mini props. Ready for takeoff? <laughs> These are not drones. <laughs> Drone has a negative connotation. We like to put a positive spin on these things. We don't spy on people, we spy on animals. All for research. Don's no rocket scientist, but he's pretty close. Leroy spent 20 years doing aerial reconnaissance in the Navy and IT after that. In his new career, he's putting a different spin on these. This is the current tool of choice for photographing uh, animals in remote locations. This is a hexacopter because it has six propellers. Essentially an RC to the nth degree. They are lighter, cheaper, and of course much less intrusive than a real helicopter. It's battery operated. It uses a lithium polymer battery, which has the capacity of a, of a whole box full of, of D cells. This is mini to the max. With its 10 computers and three gyroscopes, the hexacopter weighs just five pounds, fully loaded. It can go 60 miles per hour, and while it will reach an altitude of around 4,000 feet, the FAA requires Don to keep his hexacopter under 400 feet. And these basement-built devices have taken Don to the ends of the Earth. Last month, New Zealand, where we use the uh, hexacopter to photograph uh, sperm whales. Even a trip to Antarctica. A group of us took a hexacopter and a quadcopter to uh, Antarctica to photograph penguin colonies in order to assess the population. Closer to home, Leroy is being courted by the University of Connecticut. Joel Stocker is with UConn's College of Agriculture. He's using one of Don's quadcopters. I'm. Uh overwhelmed by this. We're trying to do work with agricultural fields and mapping programs like that, so this kind of work can be done for even projects around uh, the state of Connecticut. With concerns about spying ever present and because they literally can fly under the radar, the FAA requires operators to get a certificate to use an unmanned aircraft system. So the question remains, just how far will these fly in the name of science? They say the research possibilities are sky high. I hope to see these being used for good as opposed to simply blowing up things uh, and or uh, spying on, uh, on our enemies. I'm hoping that states and other government agencies don't try to shut this down. This is absolutely the future. There's so much potential. On special assignment in Old Line, Jim Altman, Fox, Connecticut.